What's up everyone, it's Scotty with Money Vesting. So thank you so much for joining in, by the way. And I really, really hope uh, everything is working well uh, from a technical standpoint. We're gonna give it a go, we're gonna try it out. Uh, I'm hardwired today, so I'm not connected to the Wi-Fi. You can see it up here, no Wi-Fi connection. I'm hardwired uh, from the ethernet. So we're gonna give it a go. I also dropped down the resolution. So I really hope, my fingers are crossed, that everything works well. So QQQ is down a little bit over 1.4%, so selling right back down uh, after the jobs numbers came out. And uh, we've got the SPY here down a little bit over 1%, and the Dow Jones dropping pretty aggressively a little bit over 64 basis points as well. And, uh, you know, the jobs numbers came out. That wasn't the bigger catalyst, but uh, immediately, immediately after the jobs numbers came out, there was a big flip for expectations when it comes to uh, interest rates right so that's uh, that's a very very important dynamic in the markets uh, obviously if, if uh, unemployment starts to deteriorate and uh, we see lower hiring we see layoffs we see the unemployment number tick higher that gives the market a little bit more of a sort of like a bullish market dynamics because that sends a signal to the Fed that you know what you gotta ease off on interest rates but since it was quite the opposite um, you know, we saw a very, very, by the way, earnings, DraftKings reporting pre-market. So we'll take a look uh, when the time comes. But uh, payroll increased 528,000 in July, uh, much better than expected in a sign of strength for the labor market. So non-farm payrolls uh, increased 520,000. That was actually much, much higher than, uh, than expectations. Dow Jones were estimating 258,000. So that was a very, very hot labor market. In other words, a very, uh, you know, strong labor market. And the unemployment rate also edged down to uh, 3.5%. So that, you know, right there, 3.5% coming down from 3.6%. Um, hiring in July was far better than expected, defying signs that the economic recovery is losing steam. Um, BLS reported Friday and wage growth also surged higher as average hourly earnings jumped 0.5% for the month and 5.2% for the same time last year. So one of the things that really uh, kind of took took turns, you know, uh, after this report came out was interest rate expectations. So the reason why the markets have been rallying over the last couple of weeks here, especially in the month of July and in the first week of August so far, because of two things, right? Number one, uh, there's been some expectation about a Fed pivot, right? So yeah, Oscar mentioned, but the, but the Fed will pivot. Yeah, there's been a lot of expectation uh, for that, right? That's been one of the key reasons why the markets were rallying is because they now you know started to assume or expect that the Fed will ease on interest rate hikes and they will pivot. The second reason, which again speculation on my part, but I think it's valid, is oil prices have been coming down, so we've been tracking inflation, right? So we've been keeping a close tab on uh, some of the most important inflation indicators, such as energy prices, materials, metals, agriculture, right? Those things are we, we're paying attention to very closely. And then they've been coming down, right? We tracked them in the month of June. We tracked them in the month of July. And so far in August also, we're seeing a pullback. And that is probably easing some pressures off of inflation, right? Prices at the pump, gasoline prices, food prices, those have also been coming down. So those are some couple catalysts that have resulted in a very strong rally in the market. But uh, of course, you know, the Fed has mentioned what they've mentioned. They've talked about that they will not hesitate in raising rates. The, the, their main priority is still their fight with inflation and restoring price stability is one of their biggest objectives, their main goals uh, right now. Uh, and this flipped uh, almost immediately, right? So current current target range is sitting at 225 to 250 basis points. So we're looking at 2.25 or 2.5%. And uh, earlier, uh, the markets were expecting a 50 basis point hike, uh, right? So it was expecting a 275 to 300 basis point range. And now immediately it jumped up over 63% probability for a another 75 basis point hike uh, in September. So we don't have a meeting uh, until September 21st. Uh, so there's, you know, plenty of days. So a big gap here for the Fed uh, to look into the two jobs reports, two inflation reports. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of data that's going to be coming out and they are going to put that together. And of course, they're going to have the SCP. That's a summary of economic projections also coming out. So uh, meeting probabilities uh, here. So once again, September 21st, we got a 61 and a half percent probability for a 300 to 325 uh, 
basis point target range, meaning that they are going to be potentially looking to raise another 75 basis points. At least that's what the market is kind of pricing in from Fed funds futures. And then a 54% probability for only at 25 uh, basis points. And then they're going to close out the year on December 14th is their last meeting for the year uh, at around between 350 to 375 uh, basis points. So that's where we are with the current Fed funds futures. And, uh, you know, as soon as these kind of pushed up, we saw a big decline in the markets. And you can see the QQQ now down about one and a half percent. Isn't that crazy? Like that, that is the crazy concept when it comes to understanding market dynamics and when it comes to monetary policy, what the Fed is going to do, because the market cares more about what the Fed is going to do as opposed to what the economy is showing signs of. Because you think that the, the labor market was so good, we added over half a million jobs, very strong jobs market, unemployment came down, 3.5% is where we are, it's the 50 year low, that's bad for the market, right? So you'd expect the markets to go up, but no, that's actually bad because that raises probability for interest rate hikes even further from the Fed, meaning that they are gonna be potentially even more hawkish, and uh, as a result, some big, big red candles uh, coming in for the markets. So that's where we are. Um, again, you know, at this at this point, I think this is very clear, you know, as to what the market really cares about, and that is what the Fed is doing. Uh, you know, what the Fed and the Fed is dependent on the data. So the market's really looking forward to these data coming out. So inflation numbers next week. Today we got the labor market. So a little bit of a pullback. Now this right here was something that Michael Burry posted about uh, Elon Musk and of course a Tesla. I did a video on Tesla's uh, shareholder meeting from August 4th. So make sure that you do check that out. And man, that was absolutely incredible in terms of putting forth, uh, you know, what their what their future kind of looks like. Um, and, and what they're actually planning to do over the next you know, 10 years or so. Uh, but he basically says, smart of Elon to only split Tesla stock three for one. Um, uh, $300 is still in the same realm as $900, and many investors will think it should be $900 still. There's three T's, here we come. 30 for one would have made some people realize what's going on. So uh, again, he you know talks very much in cryptic. So he likes to like play around with words and definitely doesn't you know is not a straight shooter. So uh, doesn't really speak what he's actually thinking, but instead talks in cryptic. But uh, pretty much what he's talking about is that uh, you know three trees, uh, three T's specifically mentioning to the market cap. So three trillion market cap. Here we come because many investors when the price comes down to three hundred dollars and they believe that it's worth $900 will start there. There'll be a lot of enthusiasm around the stock and uh, lots of uh, lots of investors will start buying it uh, once again. But he says 300 is still in the realm as 900, meaning that it's, according to him, might be still expensive. Uh, 300 or 900 might be the same price in terms of valuation, still expensive, but many investors would still think that it would be worth 900 and might push it up higher once again. And that would result in the market cap going up to $3 trillion. So. That was interesting. Just wanted to uh, kind of go over that as well. And then fundamental analysis tutorial number nine. So this is our ninth tutorial on fundamental analysis, uh, specifically answering a question when to sell a stock. Um, so I basically went over four scenarios four uh, different scenarios where you would be considering uh, selling a stock, uh, both from a fundamental analysis standpoint and a technical analysis standpoint. Uh, so if you haven't watched this video, make sure that you do check it out, all, all the members. Um, this is available for all of you. So, and then there's also a spreadsheet available for download right here uh, called Portfolio Analysis, a very, very quick, nice spreadsheet that will allow you to uh, kind of input your values and uh, keep track of, uh, obviously give you a bird's eye view of your portfolio. So uh, if you're interested, obviously uh, there's a tutorial that's available that I, um, you know, post it today. So Robinson, you can, uh, you know, check this out video as well and download that spreadsheet if you want. Uh, all right, so markets here, not looking too good. Uh, Joey says no lag so far, so that's good. Uh, that's really what we want, but the real test comes in about 30 minutes uh, when we actually see the market open, uh, because uh, even even in our previous live stream, I think the, uh, the streams worked well prior to the open, and then after the market's open, we have seen more issues. But I will close some tabs. I'll keep volatility open. Uh, QQQs, uh, this one I will close. We've already gone over this, so I don't, I don't think we need this one. And then when we come over to this one, meta, uh, relative charts, we'll keep that open as well. Um, and then oil prices will also keep open and then crypto prices as well. Um, so that's where we are with these ones. Okay, I'm not able to close this one. We'll just kind of follow up with that. But let's take a look at... Um, all right, so what was the employment number released today? So it was 520,000. Um, that was the number. 
and then unemployment rate edges down to 3.5%. Um, and uh, as a result, interest rate expectations immediately moved up uh, to now a 75 basis point hike coming in September. Uh, and then November is still pegged at now 25 basis points and then another 25 basis points for December. Uh, I think we may have moved up. Uh, we, we, we definitely moved up on the overall year end target range for the Fed funds futures. Uh, I'm pretty sure but correct me if I'm wrong, but before uh, the December meeting right here, the probability for us for was for us to sit between 325 and 350. Um, but now I think it's sitting at 350 to 375. Uh, so that's where we are. Boba says, please fix your lagging issues after market open, dude. Uh, yes, that's what we're going to test today. I'm connected to the Ethernet, so I'm hardwired. I also dropped down the resolution, so I'm, I'm trying to do everything I possibly can to make sure that there's no lags. So we will we will see if that actually works and fixes the issue. If it doesn't, we're going to continue to kind of test out new things uh, until uh, we fix it, you know? So... I do appreciate it. I do appreciate the patience and do apologize in advance, uh, you know, in 27 minutes when the market's open. Um, hopefully there's no problems. Jeffrey says, excellent audio and video. Okay, so far, so good. Uh, but anyway, let's take a look at individual stocks here. So in mode down almost 3% uh, right now. Not a surprise, of course, RSI, MACD, uh, also, you know, with uh, very, very aggressive levels here. Yesterday, you know, we talked about in our market update, two things. The title of the video from yesterday was two things. Can anybody remember what that was? And uh, if you don't go back and watch it, I would really, I would really appreciate it. But if you remember, just, just let me know what was the title of the video, the market update from yesterday. The regular market update, right? What did we talk about? What was the main theme of uh, that video? Caddy, uh, what you go through with the internet makes us think again about the things that we have taken for granted here in the US. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's been an issue, man. I'm really sorry and I do apologize, but uh, today, even at the gym, like the complete power was out. There was no air conditioning, right? So there was no air conditioning and I was literally sweating like a dog. No kidding. Like the complete power was out because uh, like I said, there's been storms. There's been like raining all day uh, this past week and last week. So it's been a hassle, uh, but hopefully we'll get this sorted out. Um, so Oscar says, so far to the moon, it was about overbought levels, right? So yes, we talked about overbought levels and low VIX. Yes, so Bhavani got it. It was two things, overbought levels and lower volatility. So, you know, VIX obviously coming down to very, very low levels. Right now it's up over 4.6%. But if you take a look at the overall market in general, uh, we were talking about the, the RSI and the MACD, right? So NASDAQ here, RSI approaching 68, 69 levels, MACD also. And then you take a look at some individual stocks, right? Apple. RSI 69, almost 70. Amazon, same thing. RSI over 72, right? MACD as well. So technicality wise and Tesla, same thing. Um, getting up to those levels at over 74 RSI. MACD's also been pushing up. Um, NVIDIA may be approaching overbought levels. Yep, so 66. MACD also pushing higher. AMD, certainly over 70, 71. AMD has definitely had a very strong rally and so is the MACD, very, very high. Um, and then if you take a look at Microsoft might also have a RSI that's above, so 63 and a half, not quite 70, 71. Uh, but the idea is that there's a lot of stocks that are technically uh, now getting up to quote unquote that overbought levels. Uh, does that mean that we're going to immediately see a pullback and that represents a short term uh, sell off? No, but that does mean that your risk reward is now tilted a little bit more uh, not in your favor. Pretty much it's not favorable risk reward dynamics given how RSI is overbought and so is the MACD. So um, that's where we are. And uh, let's see. So John, if you buy 100 shares of a stock and you scale out of it and sell 50 at a time, is that considered two day trades? Um, I don't, I don't think so. No, I, I think so. I don't day trade. So I, uh, you know, obviously would not be too sure about that, but I don't think, I think it's like, it would be one full trade if you exit out of your position. Um, but if you do no, let me think about it. That's a good question. I don't day trade. So I, you know, I, I rarely buy and sell in the same day. Um, 
Let's see. <laughs> so, I'm sure that someone definitely has more uh, analysis on that. If you have been day trading for a long time, if you pretty much do day trade, so I'm sure you have, um, you know, more information. But I rarely buy and sell on the same day, so I doubt that that would be two day trades. But Yes, yeah, so Otis, I'm working on that video to set up the spreadsheet for the fundamental analysis. Will probably come very, very soon. Probably over the weekend, I'll work on that, um, and that that will come out uh, very soon. So, so Denny says, and September is usually a red month in the markets. Yeah, I think that's a good point because uh, seasonality wise, uh, August, September, those are the two months that have been, you know, looking at historical trends seasonality wise, they have been a little bit more, um, you know, brutal than other months. Q4, uh, has been historically one of the best times for the markets, especially, you know, November and December when the holiday season is at its peak. Uh, you know, companies are spending a lot. People are spending a lot. The marketing budgets are increasing. There's more advertising spend, more cloud spend. Um, that's kind of like the Q4, especially November, December is usually the best time of the year for the markets and then August, September is usually the time when there's more volatility. So, um, so let's see here. So yeah, if you have any questions about any stocks, I'm happy to go over those. Um, let's just take a look at Square. Uh, Square reported earnings yesterday. I haven't had a chance to kind of go over their earnings uh, just yet, but wow, 7% down. <sighs> Um, so they beat on both revenue and earnings, um, RSI here. So once again, getting up to over 70, MACD also a little bit on the overbought side, but let's see what they reported for earnings. So lower Q2 earnings, revenue shares, uh, fall after hours. So they reported an EPS of about, um, 18 cents down from 49 cents last year. Analysts were expecting 16 cents per share. So beat on EPS, but down significantly year over year. Um, and then when we take a look at revenues, came in at over 4.4 billion, down from 4.68 billion, and analysts were expecting 4.33. So we got a both revenue and EPS beat, um, but obviously declining on a year-over-year -year basis. So I'll do a more a detailed analysis on this company, but you know, as far as I remember, for Square, uh, predominantly more than 50% of their revenues came from Bitcoin. Right, Bitcoin transactions and Bitcoin revenue was a pretty big deal, but the margins were non-existent. Right, margins were little to nothing for Square in that category. Um, so that, as a result, decreased substantially their operating margins, gross margins, and net income margins for the company. So you'll notice that on a price-to-sales basis, Square is one of those companies that trades at a very, very low price of sales under three, but then other metrics, price to cash flow, enterprise value to EBITDA, which includes their earnings and even price to earnings, uh, trades at a very, very high multiple because of those lower margins. So, but I'll do, uh, you know, definitely an analysis on them uh, very, very soon. Um, let's see. So nothing has changed fundamentally in the economy. The market uh, was fighting the Fed. Um, in this rally. Yeah, so there's there's a couple different ways of looking at it. Uh, what I would say is that there's just a small big well, it's, it's, it's a little bit of a bigger change. Uh, the one actual change that has taken place, which we will find out soon, is the the expectations with inflation. When it comes to the actual facts, yes, inflation is still high, right? 9% over 9% is where we are. Uh, when it comes to um, the economic growth, two consecutive quarters of negative GDP. That's also what we have seen. Those are facts, right? So if you look at just those two things, uh, you're absolutely right. Nothing has changed on that front. Uh, when it comes to interest rates, on one hand, you've got the Fed, you know, stating that they are, you know, going to do whatever it takes. They're going to use their tools to bring, make sure that inflation comes back down. They're going to restore price stability. Uh, markets anticipation has been fluctuating a little bit. They're expecting 50, maybe 75, maybe 25. So that's obviously been going back and forth. But when we take a look at inflation and inflation, uh, you know, obviously looking at agriculture, metals, materials, and energy, specifically oil, um, coming down to 87, 88 dollars a barrel. This is one thing that has indeed changed from a macroeconomic standpoint, it has come down uh, from all time from recent highs. You know, oil prices are now down almost 30 percent. So that's a good thing. That is definitely going to ease some of those pressures um, off of inflation, which you know we'll find out next week soon enough um, if inflation, uh, as many people called it, peaked in the month of June. Did they indeed peak? Um, and are we seeing a little bit of a pullback in July? So 
inflation numbers again are going to be very important they are going to fluctuate some of these probabilities again uh and what the what the market expects if inflation starts to uh come down and shows any type of improvement then i wouldn't be surprised if this number flips again right if we go from 75 back over to 50 basis points because if inflation is showing signs of improvement then the fed doesn't need to be as aggressive as what they've uh stated out to be but of course if inflation accelerates and you've got a strong labor market which we got the report from today then i think the probability will increase for a 75 basis point uh right now it's only 63.5 percent wouldn't be surprised if it absolutely goes up to over 75 80 percent uh right now So Letty says, you're obviously not paying attention to China has entirely surrounded fighting live missiles. Fights have been uh, canceled. Trade has stopped. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, when it comes to those political issues, I really, you know, I'm not a political expert. So I really try to, uh, you know, not speculate on that front. I know that China put sanctions on Nancy Pelosi today um, and her family because of her visit to Taiwan. Uh, but, you know, I... Uh, I have little to no knowledge about the political side of things. And so I try to stay away from those. Um, so poll, market poll. Um, yes, we'll discuss about the uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum as well. But market poll, since I am not, um, well, the thing is that I'm actually looking at the comments on my phone. Um, I don't know if I can create a poll on my phone. Can I? I don't think I can. Uh, all right, you know what? Let me just do it from my computer here. Um, let me see. Okay, right here. We'll just do a poll. Markets, market today. Green, red, and flat. So unfortunately, we are getting that same error as what we have gotten before. So you can see that I think on your screen now, YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain a smooth uh, streaming and it says poor in terms of stream status. So you know, my hopes are not too high uh, for when the actual market opens. Um, you know, we'll see if the lagging issues do happen. But so far, it's working well. So far, it's been smooth. But, uh, you know, my hopes are not too high because it is showing me that same error as what I've been used to seeing in the past. But uh, we'll see. We'll see. Okay, so going over to... Um, Joey says, now I'm scared. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, we're, we're trying, right? We're trying. I put a, I put a hard wide Ethernet um, and then I've also dropped down the resolution, but it's still not, um, you know, showing great signs. It is showing that right now uh, I'm sending over 8,600 uh, KBs per second. So the bit rate is good, but we'll see if this drops down all the way down here. You can see that um, on this. So. Well, we'll we'll see. We'll see what happens in the next fifteen minutes. Um, so Fortinet, yes, Fortinet. I want to talk about. Um, <laughs> Joey, <laughs> you don't have to do that really, but if you do, I would really appreciate it. So, yeah. So Dewey, uh, did you watch the Tesla shoulder meeting yesterday? Any thoughts? Yes, I did. Uh, I actually did a summary video as well on that. So if you go on the YouTube, um, I, there should be a video on that Tesla shareholder meeting, kind of like a summary, 10 minute summary. Uh, so you can check that out as well. But I was honestly blown away um, with everything that Tesla's already achieved, obviously, but uh, their goals, I mean, their targets to, uh, you know, expand their production, their delivery, um, and of course, their their um, goals with FSD um, and then autonomy and then, you know, robots and everything. So just incredible stuff from Elon Musk. You know, you don't you don't expect anything else uh, from from a guy like him. So, um, yeah, I, I I'd be lying if I said I didn't you know FOMO in a little bit on, on Tesla. Uh, my last buy for Tesla was six eighties, so I haven't really bought shares um, after six hundred and eighty dollars. But uh, but yeah, very very cool stuff. You know, ten to twelve gigafactories. Um, they're going to be announcing their next gigafactory location by the end of this year. Uh, the goal is to average around 1.5 to 2 million vehicles per gigafactory. So the goal will be to get up to 20, uh, you know, 20 to 25 million uh, deliveries per year, which is you know crazy. And then he also mentioned that in 10 years, in 10 years, um, you know, the goal would be to get up to 100 million vehicles. Um, so that you know would be insane because 10 years ago they were at 3,000. 
Um, now they're at 3 million, so they just delivered their 3 millionth vehicle. And uh, he said he'd be surprised if they're not already at 100 million 10 years from now. So, you know, you can just see the size and scale uh, that Tesla is moving at. And, you know, when you talk about manufacturing technology, that's their that's their moat um, that, you know, Elon Musk is really um, kind of working towards building that as the edge for Tesla is that no company, no automaker or no electric vehicle company can get up to the size and scale that Tesla is building in terms of manufacturing. And they want to get more efficient. They've got the highest operating margin in the industry. So it was incredible. Um, it was just uh, amazing. Yeah, the the, the, the the reaction to the Chinese and US question was phenomenal. Yeah, he just didn't answer. All he said was that I, I want respect and peace. Uh, to obviously which people clapped and you know uh, like that very much but he didn't he didn't uh, respond to that question but yeah that was good um, but yeah there were some interesting questions uh, overall it was a great meeting it was a great uh, presentation uh, the, the interesting thing was when the vehicle fleet chart he shows and you know that every single sequentially they've been increasing their vehicle fleet and they got up to three million and to that, he says that this kind of looks like <laughs> a presentation in business school where you're like talking about, you know, venture capital or just like a business presentation where you're showing all these graphs in the future um, to uh, pushing higher. Um, but this is the actual reality for Tesla. Um, so, Ankur, you didn't respond to that as well. Well, I'm not an expert in that. So, again, my opinion on the issue will not be as relevant, right? So, I, I don't expect myself to be, you know, some expert in, in U.S.-China trade wars or, like, political issues. So, that's why, you know, geopolitically speaking, I have no uh, opinion or expertise in that area. So, But anyway, so once again, everybody, thank you so much for joining. We do have over 550 people watching. Make sure that you do drop a like if you haven't already. Um, let's see how many how many likes we have right now. So we have about 102 likes. Let's see if we can actually at least get up to 200, right? 200 uh, would be great. Uh, definitely will push the stream out to more people. So we can lag with more people, right? We can Once the lag begins in about 11, 11 uh, minutes, I'd rather have... 600 people that we're lagging with right so that would be that would be more fun instead of just lagging with 450 people so that would create more chaos that would create more confusion right what is going on why is he lagging you know that would just be more fun uh to to watch but anyway volatility up over 5.2 percent so you know definitely pushing higher so <laughs> And uh, we've got obviously the markets still selling off. Uh, lots of stock pre-market here pulling back with you know square down almost um, almost eight percent. Then we got Apple pulling back, uh, you know one point four percent, and Amazon, Tesla, Amazon down one point three three percent. Tesla here um, down a little bit over almost two percent. So uh, my cash exposure that I mentioned in our Discord right now sitting at about nine and a half percent. So that's where we are um, for me personally. And then my goal is to build that cash up to at least 12%, 12, 12.5% 12 uh, would be ideal, uh, especially when the volatility is you know, down to where it is. So as I pointed out in my market updates, I'm gonna be a little bit of a net seller uh, in this environment, just given how much the VIX has come down, how much of a rally we've seen for the NASDAQ and the S&P and the overall overbought conditions we've seen from a technical standpoint. Um, so the lag has been good for my portfolio. <laughs> Just being superstitious, man. If that's the case, I would really, really pray for a lag. If if the lag is actually good for people's portfolios, I would pray that we lag every day. Um, so do you think that we end the end in the green by the year end? By the end of the year. Okay, so do I think the year is going to be green? Um, pro the probability is very much against it. So if you look at historical charts and just understanding, um, you know, the worst 10 starts for the year. By the way, for the S&P 500, at least in the first 180 days, uh, it sits like next to 1930s, right? So that's why this was the worst start for the S&P 500 over 90 years. Um, and... When we look at those charts, which I don't know if you guys can remember, but we talked about the first 180 day performance and then the next six month performance and the probability for full year up or down. The probability is really high for next six months to be very green. And that's, you know, something that we have seen. July was very positive. August so far has been very good. So the next six months probability really high that we that we are uh, green, but the probability for us to close green is really, really low. In fact, I think it's like 
almost 100% of the times. Um, I think I was looking, I can't remember what it was, but uh, if anybody remember that video where we talked about this specific thing, I think it was like nine out of 10 times the markets closed red when we had such a bad start to the year, at least in the first six months. So the probability is quite low for the markets to close green. Um, but the next six months, obviously, it's very high probability that we are green. But, um, you know, at the same time, a lot of it depends on what the Fed does, where inflation goes, because this S&P is down a little bit over 13% on the year. Very strong rally. And of course, Nasdaq's down a little bit over 19%. So we're not far off from those from those levels, but it just it's going to take a lot, a lot of momentum to uh, <clears throat> To push higher yes so there we go 196 likes so we're almost at our target thank you so much guys everybody appreciate it um and yeah for everybody who is uh in our in our discord and our patreon i posted this new fundamental analysis tutorial if you want to check it out this answers a question for when to sell a stock right so there's four scenarios where you would be considering selling a stock uh, or trimming a stock so it basically goes over that question. Um, and I've also attached a spreadsheet that you can download. So it's about a 20, 20 minute tutorial. This is our ninth fundamental analysis tutorial. And we've got over 10 tutorials on, actually eight tutorials on options trading, almost 10 tutorials on fundamental analysis and uh, several other tutorials on technical analysis and just general market updates uh, as well. So those are available for everybody. So Justin, uh, why is the market red today? Um, well, jobs numbers came out. They were much, much stronger uh, than what was anticipated. In fact, so strong that it flipped the overall interest rate probability uh, from Fed Funds futures. And now the market's pricing in a full 75 basis point hike in September. And as a result, we are seeing uh, the markets pull back because of a more hawkish Fed. Yes, so that's for my weekend tutorials and make notes. Yes, so I'll be posting a few more tutorials uh, over the weekend. So weekends mostly for education, and uh, you know during the week it's mostly for analysis. So that's that's a, that's a good schedule for us to have. Anyway, let's open up our charts for individual stocks, and hopefully, I really hope, man, in about six minutes, everybody, we'll find out. <laughs> I do apologize in advance. That's why I started the stream a little bit earlier, right? So it's been almost. Uh, 45 minutes since we've been live streaming. So uh, that's why I wanted to start earlier so that we get a little bit more time to talk before we see. Um, oh my God. Oscar says, and watching Man United lose. <laughs> They've been looking pretty good, to be honest. New Premier League season. Very excited about that. If everybody's into that, uh, let me know what team you support uh, or what team you enjoy um, watching and losing against uh, to United. So, uh, yeah, but they're looking good, Oscar. They're looking very good preseason. They had a really good start. Um, but, of course, we still have that overhang from, you know, where Ronaldo is going to go. But Oh, my God. A few Liverpool fans. Come on. <laughs> Richard Wolves. Is Wolves even in the Premier League anymore? I thought they got relegated. Arsenal game today. Man United, Liverpool. <laughs> yeah, more data updating during the day, so that might be the reason why, you know, we go through some lags, but... <laughs> Glasgow Rangers. Oh, Sam says Bayern Munich. Interesting, yeah. Man, I'm really, really pissed at Oliver Kahn. Like, he, why is he not going for uh, Cristiano for his transfer? Like, once Lewandowski's left, like, he's got to go for him. But he's just, it's just so, such a stupid decision in my view. Kevin, not anymore. Uh, I used to play, obviously, uh, very, very competitively, but not anymore. It's been about a couple of years since I quit, so. Uh, but I would definitely like to get back into it. Absolutely. I would definitely like to play again. Uh, but anyway, Meta platforms down 2.2%. Uh, we got Apple down 1.4%. Tesla is down 1.7%. PayPal is down 2%. AMD is down almost 3%. And Amazon is down over 1.5%. So we just got to brace ourselves for 
a very interesting open here. So yes, uh, Steve, I can go over LABU's next support and resistance. So one thing that I you know just want to reiterate that uh, LABU itself uh, will hardly have any support or resistance level because you know it's a derivative, so it has no demand or supply, like it has nothing to do with demand or supply. So you know that's that's the thing with derivatives; they only derive their value from the underlying asset, right? So LABU, um, it's it's I, I can't look at it from a technical standpoint and give you a support resistance because that would be useless in my opinion. I think the one thing we need to look at is XBI. That's the biotech ETF. That is more useful. So you can see how it's been consolidating sideways. $78.30, a very strong support. Uh, we got a nice breakout from this bull flag. And the next resistance I'm watching is going to be that 92.89, the 200 SMA, all the way up to $97. So if I were to maybe just point out some levels on LABU, uh, right now down 4.6%, but this would be that intermediate resistance, 1150 previous support. Um, and then all the way up to you know these levels up to 19 almost 20 dollars uh but again like i said it's it, just because it's gotten rejected here in the past doesn't mean it will again because it, it derives its value in xbi so xbi is what we need to really pay attention to if you are trading LBU, which by the way a lot of people have been trading in um pedro uh, i'm sorry i didn't see your message here um thank you for being a part of our patreon but i didn't i didn't see your message so uh if you can just type again i would love to uh get back to you <clears throat> yeah i do apologize we do have a lot of people joining in so this is the first time we've had over 500 people joining in a long time right so i do apologize if i miss your message there so support for baba so alibaba here um is going to be sitting at roughly about uh right here 75 77 dollars like inside like low 70s is going to be that level to watch um for alibaba so this right here uh, the green rectangle is going to be that level for Alibaba down about four percent, uh, you know, after after earnings. It was kind of selling off intraday, so it should be interesting, you know, where where it kind of ends up trading today. But uh, resistance all the way up to one twenty four, one twenty five. Um, Tina, I'll do an analysis on JP Morgan uh, very soon. So JP Morgan is definitely going to be on the list of updated analysis that we will be um, going over. So Pedro says I missed Tesla and New Volunteer videos. Uh, yeah, I'm probably gonna. I'll see if I can restart those uh, once again. There's just been so much going on that, uh, you know, we've been talking about a lot of different um, things as well. So, you know, did a video on Bank of England yesterday, which, you know, we haven't even touched on what Andrew Billy said. And man, uh, you know, their outlook on the UK, um, uh, potentially recession in Q4. There's a lot of things that we need to talk about. So, um, yeah, we haven't even touched on that. But anyway, 10 seconds till market open. Hopefully nothing happens. We'll find out or else we'll have, you know, 200, 300 very, very pissed people. So here we go for market open. Yeah, Bank America yesterday was nuts, so... <laughs> Urban says, buckle up, here comes the lags. <laughs> so... We'll find out soon enough. By the way, let me know in the chat um, if there's... It is? Ankur says it starts lagging. Of course it does. Uh, why would I, Why was I so hopeful? Why was I so hopeful, really? Oh, God. Brandon says it's a lag as well. Come on, are you guys kidding or it's actually lagging? Um, camera's lagging. So far, it's fine. Nick says, okay, I'm going to move around a little bit. Still fine for me. Okay, so it's fine for some people, at least. So we're getting at least half the people. Um, there's no lag. Okay, good, good. We've got the S&P 500 uh, down about 1%. The NASDAQ also opened much lower, uh, down about 1.2%. And then um, Oleg, no lag for me. Okay, good. So some people, there's a lag. Some people, there's not. Um, <laughs> so, so far, so good. I would say half the people, at least are doing well okay we'll, we'll give it a few minutes we'll give it a few minutes hopefully it gets better um but yeah individual stocks amazon getting bought up here very quickly intraday uh then you got amd still down about two percent paypal still down about two percent tesla uh coming down to 900 904 dollars um per share 
so pulling back a little bit more and then um you got meta platforms down almost two percent all those starting to push higher a little bit and then apple also down about one percent so i think overall we are seeing a lot of momentum here on the downside especially we're gapping down but um we'll see if intraday there's any momentum for the markets so qqqs we're going to pay attention to 318. So if you come back over to our 30 minute time frame, uh, 318 is going to be that level to watch, right? So 318 was a previous resistance for um, pull for lag or no lag. <laughs> so, <clears throat> yes, so Tina, I have checked the latency options on YouTube. I've, I've set it on low latency. Um, that is what I'm told is the best recommended latency. Um, Pruna says at least the audio is not lagging Okay, Canal says there's lagging uh, Let me see, let me see where we are on YouTube Okay Alright, yeah, so we did drop off quite a bit on viewers because of the lag I'm assuming and the stream health is still um, a little bit poor. So we'll wait maybe a few more minutes. Um, <laughs> Jason says, come back to America. Um, yeah, we'll wait for a few more minutes and see if it gets better. But it should be better than yesterday. It should be better than just a few days ago, right? Um, somewhat better, slightly better, a lot better, or just much worse, or unbearable. Chente is still here, thank you for being here. Um, <clears throat> okay, overall, I would say like 50% of you are telling me that's a good, good stream, no lags, and then other 50% obviously, uh, not having the best experience. Um, we'll continue to see if I can make any improvements. But uh, yeah, PayPal getting bought up only down 60 basis points. Um, Meta, Amazon, AMD, Apple, they are starting to push higher a little bit. And uh, as we talked about for QQQs, 318, a very strong support. In fact, we come down to 319 here and uh, uh, getting a little bit of buyer's momentum. So, you know, some buyers kind of stepping in. So, uh, so yeah, definitely seeing some momentum here intraday. So 318 is going to be that support level now. Um, and, the, and the resistance that we have talked about going to be all the way up to 328. So we got up to 325 uh, yesterday. That was the high. Um, and that would be the next resistance level to watch on the QQQs. So 325 would be that next level of resistance. <laughs> I'm just waiting for Starling to get here in India. Starling's not available yet. It's only available in the U.S., I think parts of Australia, and then I think might be in Canada and Europe as well, but it's not, not here in India yet. So once Starling gets here, we are good. Yeah, we lost quite a few of viewers there because of the lag. Like, it literally went from, like, 650 peak and down to, like, 350. So, yeah, that's, you know, unfortunate. But... <clears throat> Kevin says, see you red. Uh, let's just run through our watch list and see where we are. Um, for Fang Mint, everything's red. Uh, all the recovering intraday, we'll see if it continues, but AMD is down 2%, Tesla's down 2%, uh, Netflix, NVIDIA, Amazon, Apple, Meta, Microsoft, and Google. All of those Fang Mint stocks are down. And then we got, starting with, let's see what's green. So Cloudflare. Uh, Cloudflare reported earnings, I think, yesterday. Um, and then we've also got DraftKings pushing higher. So a very nice move on DraftKings after the earnings. Uh, DKNG pushing up a little bit over 9%. Uh, then we've got... Did I see Tattooed Chef push higher? That's that's amazing. Uh, Tattooed Chef was up over 6.77. It is up 6.7%. Look at that. Very strong move. Uh, back over $7 uh, for Tattooed Chef. Actually starting to see a little bit of a breakout here. Um, from this consolidation. So lots of resistance here. Um, support level over here. 
uh, just sitting at roughly about six dollars resistance at 690 695 and then a very nice breakout where the volume yesterday was very strong and uh, today also just lots of uh, momentum coming in for tattoo chef um, and then Fubo pushing up almost 7%, Marathon slightly green, but Vertex uh, also reported earnings uh, today. They beat on both revenue and EPS. This is a stock that uh, that's obviously done really well year to date. It's up 24%, 25%. Uh, Vertex, you know, we've traded this before. Uh, I've had this position before, uh, but not anymore. Um, but of course, if it does come down to better valuations, better prices, I would love to pick up more shares. Uh, but this was one of the stocks that you know kind of benefited us uh, on a year-to-date basis because uh, as the markets were selling off since the beginning of this year, like November, November 2021, you'll notice that that was a peak for the Nasdaq and the S&P. Um, and this right here was uh, the rally for Vertex starting November till April when the entire market was obviously selling off. Because if you take a look at QQQs, um, you'll notice that November was that peak right here, November 22nd. Since April, we've seen nothing but a decline versus Vertex very, very handsomely outperforming during that time. So, um, so yeah, that that company, very strong um, numbers do suggest that as well. So now we get to the red, and there's a lot of red. Um, you know, anywhere between 1.5%, 2%, 3%, 4%. So we are obviously down quite a bit. LAB breakout again? No way. If it's if it's what? It's just crazy how much it's how much how quickly it's getting bought up. Like look at that XBI, uh, very very nice uh, buyer stepping in intraday. So we'll see if it actually breaks above the high for the day, which was uh, eighty-eight dollars and sixty-two cents. High for yesterday was eighty-eight dollars and eighty-seven cents. So if it breaks past $89, $90, uh, it should be very interesting. My target remains at about $90. Um, so, Caddy, do you also see Monster Rally if next week inflation will report come down? My tip is peaked um, and rally could be double digits after the data out. Yeah, I mean, if, if we see improvement in inflation numbers, um, you know, if total and headline CPI, uh, total like headline and core CPI shows a lot of improvement for inflation, then I think this number can flip back again to 50 basis points. And I think the market will adjust for the loss that we're seeing today. So, uh, you know, next week's inflation, if we see any, any, any positive signs uh, of improvement in overall inflation numbers, then, uh, then yeah, I think that could be very bullish for the markets in my view. Um, and wouldn't be surprised if we do see some momentum further for a lot of names. So, um, Ray says, Cesar Scholler's meeting, I really, really like. Um, yeah, it was great. It was very good, uh, Scholler meeting. Kevin says, only the winners have stayed. <laughs> Love it. Um, <laughs> Kevin, man, you always, always find a way to make me laugh. You're just so funny. Joey, please write down the error code for me. So you can, uh, I think, take a screenshot of this. There's no error code. There's just YouTube is not receiving enough video uh, for smooth streaming is, is all I see most days. So gasoline in San Antonio, Texas, around 335. Chente, thanks for mentioning that. I was asking everybody about the gas prices. Have they come down or not? But I think it looks like they have come down. And that's actually a very good sign. Um, we'll see how much of these oil prices kind of manifest into that inflation report next week. Uh, a lot of the, a lot of it has also happened in the month of um, August. So if you come over to the monthly chart and you look at the last three months, uh, we have seen uh, in June, oil prices down 8%. In July, it was down 7.27%. And we're going to get the report for July. But most of those losses came in August, right? August was the month where crude has basically fallen over 7%. We're not even... In, first, in the first week of August. So it's been more brutal in the beginning of August. So we'll see how much of that 7% decline kind of manifested into the inflation report. And if you do see any type of improvement, but uh, but August, yeah, I'm looking forward to the September print on inflation, which is gonna be for the month of August uh, because of the much larger decrease in overall crude prices. Uh, so that's where we are, I think inflation, if it shows us a lot of improvement, then that is a very good thing.
Yeah, new Gigafactory undecided by uh, Tesla. I think they are going to, you know, announce that by the end of this year. Um, and obviously, jokingly, he mentioned, um, uh, jokingly mentioned Canada. You know, Elon Musk is half Canadian. So um, Canada definitely has a space to do it. I don't think it's going to be India uh, at all because of all the custom duty. And, you know, India is obviously looking for different things um, from Elon Musk. But uh, yeah, I mean, even the demand and when it comes to pricing levels, um, India is like a long shot for, for Tesla, at least right now. So 495 in California, uh, 390 in Charlotte, New North Carolina. So Oscar, I would try that. Thank you so much for mentioning that. Um, I will definitely try it out. I think economically, obviously, it would make a lot more sense for Tesla to go for the place where they're getting the most demand in, uh, like the rich area or rich part of the world where they're getting the most demand. Um, so, you know, economically speaking, that obviously uh, is going to be the most efficient way to go about it. Um, so Indonesia, yeah, it's definitely a good spot. Um, Yeah, Tesla's not officially sold in India. Uh, that's true. You only have to import it and then you end up paying like double the price of the car because of import duty um, taxes. Um, so yeah, th those are some reasons here why I think it's hard in India. So Ungur, thoughts on selling cash to puts on SPY monthly for extra income? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Go for it. I think in my opinion, the wheel strategy is great for generating extra passive income. Uh, if you want to do it monthlies, um, then yeah, I mean, I, I personally love to do it. So I would definitely look at different expirations, different strikes. Uh, my goal, like I said, with options is to do at least 2% per month um, or 20% or per year. So, so yeah, if you want to do the wheel strategy, I think that's uh, very much lucrative Sandeep says yeah still not a big dump in stocks uh, looks like it'll take a big dump next week uh, yeah so inflation numbers I think are going to be more important than the jobs report um, from an interest rate standpoint but uh, so far we're, we're getting a little bit of recovery here but you know Nasdaq still down 1% S&P still down 60 basis points and the Dow obviously recovering a little bit better than uh, technology names for obvious reasons but let's see what's uh, what's the Dow looking like, the Dow Jones. So we got the Dow 30 here. Uh, Disney's down almost 2%. Uh, Salesforce, Microsoft, Cisco, 3M, all of them down, except for JP Morgan. JP Morgan pushing higher, 1.5%. We got Exxon Mobil, 1.3%. Caterpillar, Chevron, Walmart, all pushing higher very, very nicely. Uh, yes, I can take a look at Twilio as well. Uh, beneath, I've actually done an analysis on Twilio before. Um, but I think it's a it's a very very good um, company, um, but we'll take a look at this valuation. Eighty one dollars definitely come down quite a bit. Fourteen billion, not profitable yet. So I think we might have to might have to uh, may have to take a look at the free cash flows or the EBITDA to kind of forecast what that intrinsic value may look like. But uh, but yeah, seventy dollars is kind of like their pre pandemic. Well, they're, they're during the pandemic, COVID crash low, uh, and I'll take a look at Twilio as well. I'll do an analysis on them. Earnings looks like they beat on both EPS and revenue. So I'll do like an updated analysis on Twilio very soon. Dave, uh, do we expect inflation to finally come down? Um, I do. I personally do because, uh, you know, we, we are seeing some signs here within uh, the inflation tracker, right? So we when we track those things, and I'll update that for, for July and August. But when we look at agriculture, uh, metals, materials, energy, uh, commodity prices, I mean, those are coming down. Right. So those are good signs. That's exactly what we want is for those prices to stabilize and come back down to uh, to more appropriate levels. So if that continues to happen and if that actually manifests into the CPI numbers, then I do expect to see some improvement in the overall inflation picture. So volatility here, let's take a look. VIX uh, up 2% was much higher, um, up to 22.5, but uh, 
just coming down to 21.89, still up 2%. And Tesla here just holding up to $900, uh, just at 900 bucks. I think that's where the uh, Tesla's 200 SMA is. Uh, so, okay, 200 SMA sits at 911, uh, but a support is at $900. Yep, so $900, that's a support, interesting support to watch for Tesla. And right now we're just kind of like hovering around 900. So, Chete, are you uh, okay, you're still holding MG stocks? Only one, uh, True Leaf. Uh, that's the only one that I have, TCNF. Um, and that's uh, that's the one that, um, in my view, is still again a little bit underappreciated. They've also got a lot of headwinds related to uh, some regulatory issues, some you know boring uh, interest rates and all those things. But uh, company remains very good. They're reporting earnings very soon, uh, and they recently had a merger as well, which is why you know their margins have gone down. They're kind of making that transition over uh, with that other company. But uh, but this is the only one that I have. So, uh, Dewey says, hey, Caddy, the video audio is crisp and clear. Uh, maybe the lag issue is something to do with how many viewers. Um, it's possible. It's possible, I think. Um, but again, I, you know, six, 500, 600 viewers. I mean, yesterday we didn't even cross 400 viewers. I think we had like 300, 350. So I, I doubt that that's the reason because uh, YouTube should be able to handle that many viewers. It's not like I'm Mr. Beast or anything. Like I'm not streaming with a million <laughs> subscribers. Um, but I think it's like 200, 300, 400 should be like fine. I don't think that should create any problems. But uh, it's good. It's good that we're not having any issues uh, right now. And uh, stream is working well. I think it's just that first 10 minutes, first 10 minutes when you get that immediate data pull from TradingView. Right, so because TradingView has this real-time data, uh, then I've also got Weeble open right here for some reason, which I should quit. But I've got Weeble, I've got TradingView, so I think it's the first 10 minutes that we see a lot of uh, data getting pulled uh, to TradingView because of the real-time stuff, and then after that, it kind of settles it settles down, right? So it kind of settles down. So I think it's the first five, 10 minutes that it happens, and then after that, it kind of smooths out a little bit. Correct me if I'm wrong, but um, that you know, that is very much a possibility. <laughs> Joey says, don't worry, folks, we will solve it this month. Uh, Palantir earnings. I'll do a video on Palantir. I think it report next week, right? So, yeah, so they report on Monday, uh, August 8th. So I'll do a video on them uh, over the weekend. Absolutely. So, all right, I'm just going to make a note here. Uh, make videos on... All right, so I'm gonna do a video on Palantir. That's gonna be for earnings. Uh, then we got Twilio that we talked about. Um, those are two there for the weekend. Of course, there's gonna be more. We've got a whole list, so we'll continue to uh, do analysis on those. But those two will definitely be out. Um, and then Square, I haven't taken a look at Square yet. Um, Square earnings, we'll talk about. And then I've also got earnings calls to catch up to, right? So this week we had uh, some companies uh, reporting earnings. So. Uh, AMD PayPal, I already talked about their earnings, uh, earnings call, not just the numbers, numbers we already talked about, but earnings calls as well. Uh, I'll, t I'll listen on Uber as well. I'm particularly interested in Uber. Um, uh, I'll do a video on Uber as well. And then JP Morgan, I'll add. But Uber earnings call is what I'm really interested in. Not the numbers itself, but the actual earnings call. Did anybody listen in on Uber's earnings? And then SoFi, I want to listen to Anthony Noto. I want to see what he has to say about the company's progress, the growth, uh, the student loan, uh, you know, obviously on pause here. So those are companies that I will definitely be listening in on. Uh, Twilio, uh, Cloudflare, maybe, maybe, but definitely not the priority there. So, um, And SoFi, Oscar, yeah, I just added SoFi. <laughs> Caddy Stock just broke that 256 resistance for likes. <laughs> um, let's take a look at Upstar. Let's see where that stock is trading. Uh, down 4.5%, so 5%. Uh, two, three very strong days, kind of bouncing off of 2260s, 225s, um, and then pushing higher. And then right now, uh, starting to pull right back down over the last couple of days here. 
Tesla just hovering around 900. Um, Yeah, uh, Oleg says Ark is crying. Twilio minus eighteen percent looks like another her stock heavily beaten. Um, yeah, I mean it's it's incredible, it's incredible how it's crazy. So yeah, I'll definitely do a analysis on Twilio as well. Steve, that's a great that's a great suggestion. Maybe start the stream after market opens. Yeah, we can do that too. Maybe maybe you know what? You know what we can do? Maybe I split the streams with a pre-market and then maybe 15 20 minutes after the market opens. How about that? We we take a small break and then we come back in after the markets are open. I think that's a good idea. I think that kind of uh obviously doesn't have that lag anymore in the middle <laughs> kind of splits up splits us right there so we do like a 45 minutes pre-market we scan through stocks see what's moving look at the look at the earnings look at the stocks look at different uh upgrades downgrades all that stuff and then after the market opens we can do that we can start a new one so let me know what everybody thinks about that i think that's a good idea Yes, uh, Amazon, I think, just bought a vacuum robot. I think it was. I read about this earlier. Um, right now, up down about 1%, hitting that resistance. 143 is that resistance. But I think they did buy 1.7 billion, uh, acquire iRobot. Uh, yeah, so iRobot for $1.7 billion. So iRobot basically was up 20%. Um, <laughs> come back when it is green. It will be an hour, I guess. All good, the lag is transitory, <laughs> says Jerome Powell, right? The lag is transitory. <laughs> five minutes break is enough. So just a very, very small, quick break, five minutes, allowing for the volatility and the lag to kind of settle down. But yeah, a new uh, Amazon. Amazon's been kind of buying companies left and right recently. iRobot. It was another acquisition um, just uh, last month, I think. You know, just a few weeks ago, they bought another company. Yeah, so they're they're really into M&A right now. Uh, considering the valuations have come down, I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, the yeah, Oscar says, in Amazon really spending the cash while its stocks are cheap. They definitely are. <clears throat> So in mode here, down a little bit over 2.4%, um, trimmed a little bit more yesterday. And uh, now uh, I've only got, I think, 300 shares left. All three are um, locked in with covered calls. And uh, yeah, so they're up to $40 strikes uh, up until January. So $40 is still the target that I have. That's still the uh, you know level that I'm paying attention to. That's about 12% away, which I think would be very much a possibility for in mode if tesla continues on this trajectory a little bit intraday i really don't mind picking up some shares um you know few shares because uh, i know and i know technically it's a little bit overbought rsi macd very much um not suggesting very appealing risk reward trade-offs here so but man, everything that I listened to yesterday in qualitative analysis wise from, from Elon Musk kind of checks all the boxes. So we'll see. We'll see where Tesla ends up. Yeah, Amazon will, cent will be the center of the universe with all industries. They will have medical services as well. Yeah, yeah, that was the acquisition. I think uh, a new healthcare provider is what Amazon bought um, recently. So um, yeah, a couple acquisitions, very quick. Uh, Mama says, Caddy becoming FOMO. <laughs> uh, no, I think I have to keep myself in check. I think I have to, you know, really focus on the technicals. Um, that's what technical analysis is for, right? It helps you understand where the risk reward dynamics are the best. Um, obviously, when the RSI is at lower levels, that's usually the time to be dollar cost averaging. But when RSI is at, you know, or bot levels, uh, so is the MACD and the price has already moved up so much. Uh, not the best risk reward trade off here. So. Somebody's got to keep me in check. Who's going to be that person? Maybe 
Kevin, are you going to keep me in check? Or are you going to push me more towards FOMOing into some stocks? Chente, I did buy. I bought I bought at 680s. 680s was my last price that I that I bought at um, right here. Uh, this was the last um, purchase I made for Tesla. It was $680. But uh, yeah, after that, obviously, we got way too high. So, all right, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining in. Uh, very, very happy to uh, see that we had little to no lags today and it was working well. Uh, I'll continue to kind of use the Ethernet cable and uh, we'll, we'll continue to kind of monitor the situation. And, and you know, if everybody likes the idea, I'll, I'll you know, ask, ask in our Discord uh, members as well. If everybody likes the idea of maybe a 30 to 45 minute stream before market opens and then maybe... 10 minutes, 15 minutes after the market's open, we can do like another 30 minutes, um, then we'll just start doing that. So thank you so much for joining. I really appreciate it. And uh, there's going to be some tutorials I will be posting over the weekend, um, uh, spe specifically on intrinsic value. I know you guys have been waiting for that, uh, but this was another one that I posted. And then uh, we got to fill up the technical analysis side as well. So uh, this is our uh, Discord, of course, if you come up to our private videos, right here is the channel, right? You can simply go up and kind of scan through. We've got tutorials on options trading, uh, fundamental analysis, and then technical analysis, we got to fill up a little bit. We've only got two, so I got to do more. Uh, I'll probably do like at least, uh, you know, a few more for the next couple of months out uh, tutorials on technical analysis. So once again, thank you so much for joining. I really appreciate it. Um, grateful for all of, you, all of you and have a great weekend. Um, make sure that you drop a like, subscribe if you're new to the channel here. And also, uh, link's going to be down in the description if you want to join, of course, our Discord and our money vesting community. Get access to all the private videos, uh, spreadsheets, um, downloadable stuff, PDFs, um, all the alerts as well. So thank you so much. Have a great weekend and I will see you all in the next live stream. Take care.